Ready to be dropped in. All right, guys, we are here today at a lake I've never actually bass fished. I grew up a stone's throw from here, though. This is Lake Tawakany behind me, and uh, it's really cool. I'm going to actually get to go out on a boat that I've never been out on before, and, you know, I'm going to let you guys know that I'm going to start looking at new boats here pretty soon, but... Uh, what we're going to do is get out on a boat that I've never had a chance to actually ride in. And I've heard so many good things about. That's the Bass Cat. And as a matter of fact, the one that we have right here behind me, uh, that's probably in the sun, but the one we have right here for me today is Ken Smith's Bass Cat Lynx. It's a brand new 2021 and absolutely gorgeous. It's got a lot of things that I'm already seeing that I'm liking. And I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to consider this as my as one of my next rides but we'll, we'll see about that see how she runs and everything i just photo bombed you <laughs> got the photo bomber there looking forward to it looking forward to getting out on a bath cat again heard so many good things about these things over the years i know they hold their value they you know have a superior ride from what i've heard just really looking forward to getting out and seeing what this boat can do. So let's get to it. Hey, hot down the old, the old cat here. Um, gotta say though, guys, this has been one of the most impressive boats I've ever ridden in. Just right from the get go, I noticed how soft it sat when it hit waves, how I didn't feel any kind of jarring in my back immediately from this, the co-angler side, how tight everything just seemed, uh, how when it cut waves, it re the the shape of this hole just really cuts the waves good and you know you know i've got a skeeter you know i bought a skeeter and then i bought yet another skeeter and just the sound of when this thing was hitting the waves made such a difference so i'm gonna walk through the features of this boat i got ken here to help me out with anything any of the different questions but you know i'm going through the process of also purchasing a new boat this year and you know i've been a pretty loyal fan of Skeeter, but I want to experience other things out there. And as a co-angler, I've ridden in a lot of boats and been impressed by a lot of different boats. Uh, you know, even Nitro had things that impressed me. So, you know, I'm going to go over just kind of the, the features of this boat as I see them. Some of the things that, you know, you might not think of, but first let's start off over here in the, uh, the co-pro spot, the co-angler spot. And, uh, you know, He's got a, a console here, which for a co-angler is nice uh, because you have something to, to block the wind, you have something to hold on to, but most boaters will forego this for uh, additional deck space, but this is really nice. I mean, the, the red flake and just the, the, the Bass Cat at overall, this is a Lynx, and let me tell you, she is gorgeous. And I saw the photos before he wrapped them too, uh, which I really love the color scheme of this. It was like a black, red, and white kind of mixture. And it's just got a, a beautiful red flake in it. Um, but you can see there's there's cup holders. Cup holders in a lot of different locations. That was one of the things I just kept noting, you know. Matter of fact, let's look back here on the back. You know, as you're stepping up, cup holders. Go further to the back, more cup holders. I mean, how many times has a co-angler been on the back and be like, Man, I'd love to just be able to set my drink down there and and have it you know nearby. So that's just one of those unique features that you don't see. Um, now I'm not gonna immediately say that hey everything is absolutely perfect. I think you need real reviews so you can make informed decisions. And you know these hatches on the back they're kind of raised a little bit. And you know I was stepping on those every once in a while as a as a co-angler and it makes me think I'm stepping on something I shouldn't be uh, but I'm sure they're designed perfectly to take the weight and everything well and Lou the reason they're designed that way is this box is designed to lift off so if you're out in the water and you got to get to your sump and so actually if, my, if your stuff wasn't there it'll lay over and lay flat okay so it's very handy so you can get to your junk back there 
So now how many other boats can you do that to? No. None that I know of. No, uh, you know, so there's there's always two, com so as you know, I did a big boat search. Correct. And I looked at 16 different boats, 14 or 13 different makers or 12 different makers. And what I liked about this boat was kind of the engineering of how, and, and Rick Pierce is really the mind behind Basscat, but some of the things they thought through. So the mindset always on a boat is one of two things. Either it folds open this way so that you can get to it from in the boat, or it folds open this way so you can get to it from out of the boat. And there's positives and negatives to both. My Ranger folded this way, it bounced open once and broke the hinge because I was going down a lake and it caught the wind. If it opens this way, you can't get to it. The thing about this one is you can get to it. Now, there are a couple of other ones that actually fold and fold that way. So the box has a hinge this way in the middle so you can get stuff. That's cool. Matter of fact, I think the Skeeter, if I remember right, I think the FXR is one FXR. of the boats that does that. So, you know, he, I, I'm not going to say over engineer some stuff, but he certainly thinks about how to get the stuff, how to get to your sump. I mean, I've got my throw cushion in there, but you can get to every pump in there without, you know, if you had a pump go out during the day without doing anything. So I carry a spare pump. They're on plugs. You just twist that top, pull it out, unplug it, and you can put a new pump in there. So I'm going to say something about that, especially with my Skeeter. Um, I have screws back there. So on it's a 2019 FX20, but you know I have screws back there that I actually have to take a drill, unscrew to get any access. And the other day when uh, you know, I had problems on the water, I was doing that. I was unscrewing the deck hatch so that I could get access to the battery. And you know what? <laughs> I guess I'll say one other thing. I mean, when it's your boat and you're fishing from the front all the time and you need to access the back, who cares what the co-angler thinks? Well, and, and, you know, one of the, one of the, so the first boat I reviewed was the Bass Cat Hybrid. And that was not the boat for me because it's a narrow boat. It rides more like a champion. But these, the system he's got, those boxes that your battery's locked in in, I fought forever those cheapy cables. When I saw this system, I love this system. And if you go to smaller lithium batteries, they got spacers that go in there so you can put your batteries in there. You know, there's just a lot of things. Like, for example, again, my Ranger. My Ranger, the batteries are one here, three over there, and they're to the outside of the boat. Well, if you think about it, from a ride and from a handling standpoint, weight should be center mass. Right? Yep. So it makes a lot more sense to me. Now several battery several companies are now putting the batteries back here, but he's gone two and two. Now, if you're running lithiums, that doesn't matter as much. But I'm running seven or four seventy or eighty pound batteries back here. So it makes a much bigger difference to me. There's just a lot of stuff. I mean, I'll give you another example. The bolts that mount your trolling motor to the front of the of the of the boat or trolling motor bracket. He, he being Rick, took, and instead of having a bolt that long with thread the length of it, he took the center thread out, and he picked up, he gave me some number, 20 or 30% strength in the bolt with the same diameter bolt by not having threads in the middle, which makes sense, right? More, more metal there. So he just thinks through a lot of stuff. There's a few things I've seen already in the boat I would like to change, but overall, after looking at basically every major manufacturer, I've been really happy with this boat. And it will, for me, now I'm not an Allison or a bullet guy, but this thing will fly for me. Now, don't they do something different with the transom than anybody else? Yeah, so he's a three bolt, he's a six bolt transom. And there's a, a lot of reasons behind that. You see on the inside, there's an aluminum plate here and there's an aluminum plate on the inside too. So he's very big on securing the motor. And you know, I just did a really interesting video series with a guy named Nick Peterson who is Mercury Racing's performance propeller, propeller manager. And when I was sitting with Rick, I, and I'll be curious your take on this, Lou. Mm. I had always thought you want to go faster, you move your motor further from the boat. Further <laughs> jack plate, faster boat. And Rick said, that's not the case. He said, the, the closer you can get the motor to the boat, the cleaner the water. And I thought, yeah, that's contrary to everything I've ever heard, but he makes baskets, you know, and I knew basket won't let you have bigger than a 10 inch jack plate because it adds a lot of extra stress to the motor or to the transom. But I asked Nick the same question. He goes, oh, absolutely. 
He goes, if you could have your motor dead up against the back of your boat, you'll get the cleanest possible water. He said, the only reason people put, now remember, this is a jackbait plate, this is a setback plate. He said, the only reason people back the boat away from, or the motor away from the boat, is if the boat isn't properly balanced, so that by backing it away, they change the balance. It's a fulcrum, right? Okay. They yeah. change the balance. He said, you want that motor as close to your hull as you can get it, because that's where the cleanest water comes from. Hmm. So again, just dudes that have been doing this a long time and thought through a whole bunch of stuff. All right, guys. So we're going to continue now with uh, just kind of the look, continued walkthrough of uh, this Bass Cat boat, this Lynx. Um, as you can see, it's got the kind of bass cat live wells that they're known for these kind of triangle live wells and uh nice logo with a, a padded upper right there too you know us uh, people in the north who hit them big waters and know that people will put bass no or pool noodles and things like that inside of here to help keep fish alive so that's nice it's nice and quiet too you hear that it's not slamming down there's all these little things that you never know and they never see in like the brochures or uh, you know you never hear the pros talk about and here you've got these nice quality latches that really sense these things down and Ken was telling me an interesting fact about these all right so one of the interesting things about this type of latch is that it doesn't transfer heat from above I mean we've just come off the water in 100 degree heat and let me tell you every single one of those things up there is scorching right now and they transfer heat into the live well and we've all had tournaments to where we've had you know fish die or hopefully you haven't but you know sometimes that's just an um, one of the things that happens during these tournaments you know these boxes heat up and people don't have properly aerated live wells um, so anything you can do anything at all you know there's reasons why people buy bags of ice is to keep these cool and, and that's just another feature of these bass cats that helps keep the fish alive so one of the other things sit down in the driver's seat okay. uh, and, and you're a young dude but for us old dudes you can stand straight up behind the wheel oh wow <laughs> <laughs> you laugh that's a big deal no it is it, you can just because like if you're looking at grass flat looking at how you know grass is scattered and things like that that's something that's going to help you out because you can see okay i got thicker grass up there but scattered grass and that's what i'm targeting so or if you gotta have a hip replaced i'm just saying when you get old that makes a big difference and actually as a a, a shorter guy i'm five seven these dual units right here i can see over the top of this i thought when you were driving it that i wouldn't be able to but uh yeah i can absolutely see over the top of this really far. which is also why i went with that lower unit on the front the the mount that i've got on the front of the boat too oh okay yeah because they're not sticking up uh-huh let's take a look at this uh driver's seat right here kind of everything that you got going on here you got your control panel which are kind of just nice push buttons right there with good logos on those those are like rubber buttons that are extended out away from the uh, the dash there. All your gauges right here, but of course you can hook up a lot of gauges to your electronics anyway. Ken's running uh, both a Humminbird and a Garmin. So, you know, I saw this thing in action today, this Garmin, I was quite impressed with the clarity of that, I have to say. Uh, that, that might be on the next for, boat. For 4000 bucks, it should be pretty awesome, but it really <laughs> is. Yeah. Awesome. You know, and one thing I do regret is I've lost my Mercury Smart gauge because it's uh -huh. covered. So we're going to NEMA these so I got my RPMs and everything through there. Okay. But also got some tie-off cleats here. That's yep. always nice. It gives you a nice center point for when you're at a dock. You don't have to worry about this thing spinning around on you, especially if you're just right here. Or And especially if you're going through a lock. Okay, yeah. Because going there. through a lock, you know, it it pushes your boat around, so it gives yeah. you an extra tie point. I've gone, I've gone through a few of them. <laughs> but this, this is just kind of one of those, you know, features that I like because of what it does to the, the look of the boat. I like this design here and this Lynx. Um, I think it's a little bit different from, from previous versions. Don't they have like kind of like glass looking rod? That kind Everybody of except it? the Lynx does. Everybody except the Lynx? The le that's that's a Lynx. That's a nice grab point. Oh, yeah. No angler. Or, you know, probably another tie point. Who knows? But I think it just adds to the looks of the boat, makes the boat look uh, just, you know, cooler. 
Okay guys, so here's another neat feature and, and you look at it and you're like, oh, that's kind of like a small cooler. Well, in fact, it actually goes quite the ways. I'm gonna have to prop it up with my leg, but it goes, I'm gonna toss that up there a good ways and you think about how that design is imagine you know you, you put your bags of ice in here and then you turn them to the side and then shove them up forward so you could probably get two three bags ken said at least one 20 pound bag but could have probably held more unique look at the uh the tool holder there and it looks like it's a plate with kind of some foam or something in there to kind of hold your tools and i'm going to guess that that's a sacrificial little piece there so if you wanted to replace that later brand new when you go to sell it every or whatever that square every bolt every screw in here has that same design so you can see, one you one can square one square drive and get anything that you need pulled off in the boat pulled off nice and of course you can torque the crap out of a square drive versus a phillips head and you always have to be you're always working on your boat no matter Some, what look something's gonna go wrong you're saying each one of those lights is individually controlled. Is it that little button that's right there? Oh, nice. Huh. See, it's all these like little features, guys, that, you know, you, you see a boat, you see how just beautiful it looks from the side, but then you, until you get up on it, you just, you don't understand. Now, some of the, I think the only one I've ever been on was the Cougar, and it seemed to have a pretty expansive deck. Now, this one, I would have to say, absolutely has very much a, an expansive deck you know if i were to take see that latch is not down right now um but yeah there's a, there's literally a lot of space i mean you had like just eight rods on this side while ago <laughs> just on that side and those high gunnels actually help keep rods you know here on on the boat famous to me was too low uh, the Phoenix PHX is too high. The Phoenix high. 921 is perfect. This is perfect. Just a good look at kind of the upper portion of this deck here. And what's more, another cup holder. I don't know you if I like. You can almost that. put a call pack in your cup holder. <laughs> I don't know if I like the position of that cup holder. So this is cool. Kind of weird. That is all your front power. So if you're huh. up here sight fishing and you don't want to accidentally step on your lights or anything, you flip that off and that power grid is then closed. And one of the things you know that makes me crazy is I want to be able to trim my boat up and down with my feet if I get yeah. a fish on in the bushes. And real, of course the trolling motor's away right now, but when you're fishing, it's really easy to trim your motor up and down, even if you've got boots on okay. in this boat. Versus trying to hit one of these types of... Oh, or the worst is what was on my Ranger, those recessed buttons. The only way to do it oh. is either with the finger or with the butt of a rod. Can't do that if you're fighting fish. By the way, you said something. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm not trying to screw up anybody's business, but my understanding is if you put a brace arm on your 360, that will void your warranty. Uh, my guys, my trolling motor guys here told me that Hummingbird says these things are designed to wiggle when you're going down a lake. And if you brace that, it's bad for the inside. So if they see you've had a brace on one, that will void your warranty on your 360. Hey guys, so we're gonna take a look real fast at the, uh, the rod locker, which is actually in the center of this boat. Now, I'm somebody who's always had boats with center storage. And that's something that I've always liked. However, I got to see today someone utilize a boat without center tackle storage. And I have to say, I mean, it worked, seemed like it worked pretty well for you. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't really in, impair you at all. Um, utilizing these side ones again, you know, you had a lot of your rods stacked up here because you can have so many rods stacked up here. So if you're utilizing this other side for tackle storage, then, you know, you're actually have a nice place to sit down and work on your rods instead of sitting over on one of the sides, which generally is only this side over here. Well, and you know, a lot of guys get twisted up about the weird shape of the boxes, but what I'll show you that he did, that something I learned in going through all of my reviews, this is super smart. And what I mean by this is- That's as space. Opposed to having that hinge here, yep. with that hinge here, 
you can scoot your rods over when you need to open your box as opposed to flipping all your rods over the side of the boat. So this space, same thing over there, you've got space to push your rods over when you need to get in one of these boxes. And you're right, I am never on them like that dude that wears the on them hats. <laughs> I need a not on them hat. So, it, you know, there's very seldom, I don't have eight or 10 rods, at least on this side. And I like being able to open that box and not worry about tossing a, a rod over the side of the boat because I got this space to push them over here out of the way. So I'm gonna pop this one open just so you can kind of see. Now, I don't think you've got this straight ready, tournament ready or anything like bring. that. Oh no, it's, so, it's full of junk. See right there, there's a net. I didn't even know that's where the net went. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Again, these are things that I am just now finding out about this boat. That's the, uh, the Ego slider there great brand it fits nicely yes it does and that's the one that'll extend out to catch fish but um as you can see it's got all this tackle in there and i mean everybody's boat's different some people you know the way you rig your boat completely different than the way that i might do mine so you know just see again more more space for more of the stuff we need all right guys i found it that's probably my favorite cup holder in this boat right there that makes a lot of sense to have it right there i like that <laughs> all right one last look at the other side over here again you can see this is, can actually go as a, a rod box as well you can see he's got some tools in here just additional storage in the back if you need more um but again more room stack more tackle starting to starting to grow on me especially the center center rod box here let's take another look at that thing one more time again i'm on the side here and i'm able to use that and you've got rod tubes up there quite a bit you can always take those out in a lot of these generally it's just a screw right where that led's at you can kind of take those out and then you can just shove things in there uh without any regard and they'll just all lie on top of each other but large large collection of lose products in there and you know how i feel about my lose so places for the rod butts there as well just uh pretty impressed with this guys more more so the ride the ride just is not i haven't felt a ride like that in a while all right guys so there you go that is the bass cat lynx my buddy ken smith this is his boat his boat for 2021 and, uh, you know, he made the switch, just kind of like what I'm looking to do myself. You know, I've been running Skeeters for the past several years and just looking to get into something a little bit different. I've had a lot of experience on Phoenix, really like Phoenix boats. So this was my first experience on a Bass Cat boat. And man, I was definitely blown away. Can't say that enough about how just this thing rode, how it felt, how it felt in the co-angler seat. Um, how it took the waves, uh, the amount of space both on the back deck for a co-angler, like there is a huge amount of space back there. And pan that out so that you can see that. Look at that, a lot of space back there for a co-angler. And then again, the space up here on the front deck. I'm somebody that, you know, I really enjoy having a wide deck. I don't want a narrow boat and that's what I really enjoyed about this. So guys, if you're in the market for a new boat, get over to Bass Cat, definitely check these out. I'm going to be checking them out real soon. So as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one.